Hello, World Wide Web! I'm Dr. Shadow, the Internet Personality Best here, and welcome to the reaction review for Halloween 2018, which is in reference to the movie that came out in 2018 that's called Halloween, not to be confused with the Halloween that came out in 1978, or Halloween that came out in 2007. There's a lot of movies out there called Halloween, but the point is, it's the reaction review, just went to the theater, just saw it, just gonna give my sort of off-the-cuff reaction to it, and I might do a long-form review of it down the road in a different video. But anyway, <clears throat> first I'm gonna start off with trying to be spoiler-free as possible, and then kind of go and just spoil the whole movie anyway. But what kind of movie was Halloween 2018? Well, it was a modern slasher flick with Halloween influences, and some of them worked better than others. I feel like the way that the, the best part of this movie was where it felt like Halloween, but it was its own thing. Not the scenes where it was obviously referencing a scene from Halloween, or a line from Halloween, or a character from Halloween, or obvious setups of it's like, hey, isn't this just like you saw before? It's like, yeah, it means I've already seen it. What, what, what do you have to offer? Uh, but it, didn't, it took it a long time to get into that. Uh, the first, it, it, this movie, it's, uh, it's kind of weird, because it's like, it's not really bad, but it's not really great. There are plenty of good things and plenty of bad things. It's just, oh, I can say this about any frickin' movie. Okay, let's get into some specifics. Uh, the first... The first half of the movie is really kind of modern horror movie. We're gonna try to scare you with all the tricks in the book. We're gonna open up to this creepy stuff, and it's gonna be all the creepy, crazy shit that is the same kind of shit you've already seen in, like, every other horror movie that's come out in the last five years, so... Yay. Uh, and then there's jump scares. Jump scares, jump scares, jump scares! First half of the movie, jump scares, jump scares, jump scares. Last half of the movie... Suspense, suspense, suspense. That's the part that feels more like a Halloween movie. And that's the thing that's really kind of odd to me, is the whole way it goes about it. it, it with the uh, with the jump scares, there's so many frickin' jump scares in the beginning of the movie. Whereas, like, every time, it feels like every time the camera changes, it has to change to some kind of big, boom, gotta change to this explosion, gotta change to... Boom, and not, not only that, but uh, there are so many frickin' jump scares in the beginning of the movie. There are, there's a time, not only is there a time when a character jumps out, like, ha, ah, ha, got ya. That happens twice. Two different characters do that. If you, if you stop, step back, think maybe you're going a little crazy with these jump scares, okay? Um, now, when it comes to the, uh, you know, the cinematography was pretty well done. It was kind of, the, the beginning of the movie felt more like a modern kind of movie. The same kind of angles and stuff, very close up that you always see. Not too much of that. Most of the cinematography was really well done. Unfortunately, also towards the beginning of the movie, it also seemed to have a little more homage to Halloween scenes. They were still there towards the end, and they were still just as predictable as you would expect for seeing the scenes from a movie you've already seen. Uh, but, yeah, there's, uh, the characters is kind of like where things really start to make this its own kind of movie with its own kind of feel. And that's both good and bad, because not all characters are created equal in this movie. It feels, in a way, kind of like the, uh, the, the situation we had in Halloween H2O, except much better execution. Whereas in Halloween H2O you had Laurie Strode, and they covered her backstory in the same shit over and over and over and over again, and eventually we get to the point where, okay, let's talk about some other characters. Uh, he's a son, he's a friend, that's a uh, person they like to fuck. Okay, boom! Let's get gets going. Uh, instead of that, you had a big tractor just going right when you're trying to talk. But anyway, instead of that, uh, you had Laurie Strode, you had the characterization, and they went into more detail 
about different things, which was nice. And then they had her family and her fam the friends of her family and all of that. And to an extent, some of their extended sort of situations and what have you. And it, uh... It felt a lot more balanced, a lot more characters were... Th th there were more characters than there were in H2O, and they were better written, and they seemed to be better acted... Yeah, th yeah, they were better acted, too. But there's just some that were just really cliché as fuck, and it's the worst kind of cliché, because it's the cliché that thinks it's subversive, and I hate that so much. It's like, ha, huh, well, isn't it so cliché to do the opposite of this? Well, we did this instead. It's like, no, no, everyone's doing that now. Everyone for the last ten years has been doing that. It's not subversive. It's, it is predictable. It is fucking... Just, it's what I see coming a mile away, and yeah, it happened exactly as I saw, so fuck. But it does feel like kind of a modern slasher flick. A modern slasher flick, flick that's a serious kind of take on a modern slasher flick. You got the cliche stuff, as you do. You have a high body count, uh, but it also does do the Halloween thing better with a lower body count towards the end. It's kind of weird. It's, it's a very top-heavy kind of horror, where everyone dies right away, and then things get scary. It's kind of... kind of strange in that regard. But it mostly works. It's a really tough one to rate, though, with all the things it does well and all the things that kind of grate on me. I feel like it's either a high three or a low four. And it's really hard to pinpoint where. It does get scary towards the end. In the beginning, it's just jump scares and bullshit. But towards the end, when they start actually slowing down and having things just let things be frightening, they are. But then there's this, because they have so many different things going on, things get disjointed there too, so it's not perfect, but... It's, it does its job relatively well. And uh, I feel like it's one of the better... It, it, yeah, it's clearly one of the better Halloween movies. But, I mean, you know, I, I, I haven't exactly thought too highly of too many of them I saw, so it's not exactly the greatest praise to give, but... For, uh, sort of H4O, it's good. It does the job. It's a good one for uh, Jamie Lee Curtis to come back in as Laurie Strode. The character Laurie Strode was pretty well done. And her family was well done, and they all had their own kind of characterization, their own kind of... Uh, desires in life and what have you. Then when you get to the extended friends of family and relationships between people who aren't direct descendants of Laurie, that's when things start getting a little wonky, but... Yeah. It does its job. It's spooky towards the end. It's got a high body count in the beginning, and it's... It's okay. It's one of the better horror movies of the modern era, I think, but not by a huge margin. It's just... It's above average, I guess you could say. Anyway, let's get into some spoilers, because I am going to talk about how meh, everything is for... And, and not get into detail for too long, so let's... Let's go with, uh... Exactly what in this movie do we get? It's almost like Halloween again, but it's not really... It's weird, because they, they say... Oh, it, it, it pretty much it uh, covers, plot-wise, right where the first movie left off, except not right where the first movie left off, because the first movie left off with Michael escaping, and this movie starts off with Michael was captured, so there's a slight difference there. But also, they do specifically retcon out Halloween 2. So that, that is, not only is this timeline different in that sense, the whole... They, they specifically go over the point of, hey, some people were saying something about Laurie Strode and Michael Myers being brother and sister. And then they completely shoot that down like, no, nope, that's just some bullshit that some people say because they don't have anything better to do with their lives. So it's interesting how they went about that just completely saying, no, it that did not happen. That is not going to happen. That is not the situation here. Eh. Okay. Because, I mean, when I got to that point in Halloween 2 myself, you know, I really thought that that didn't help. That was just kind of a really weird reasoning thrown onto Michael that didn't really... It didn't make him scarier. It tried to make sense of it, but it made a sense in a way that didn't make sense, really. And it's it, it was it was all kinds of awkward that then tried to get reworked later. 
and it just it it was always a very odd thing throughout the rest of the series so to see that just be one of the things i say okay that is definitely boom that is not what we got here i was like okay okay so there's a uh, yeah like i said there's you know the characters are pretty well written but there's a th there there's a it's kind of like orange is the new black i think where where they have a kind of similar issue i find Orange is the New Black, you got a great drama, great characters, great acting, works out very well. Anytime they try and say anything like, in, in terms of uh, make a social commentary on something, nine times out of ten it falls flat on its face and it's just, what the hell. Uh, and uh, you got a similar kind of thing with the way the characters are done in Halloween 2018. I, I there are like, <laughs> Every guy is a... Almost every single character that's a guy is just bad. They're either a bad person or they're just... There's, I, I, I think, like, the sheriff, he didn't necessarily do anything wrong. Ooh, he didn't have much screen time either. And, uh... Well, the one kid... Also not too bad. The other kid wasn't so bad until he shot the guy, but then it turns out he probably should have, so I don't know. Uh, but either way, and they killed a kid too, which was kind of, kind of dark. But the kid did shoot a guy earlier, but then the guy he shot turned out to be evil, so fuck it. So uh, that's, that's the way of establishing Michael's evil, just have him kill a kid. <laughs> it's uh, never, never an enjoyable moment in a horror movie where they just straight up murder a child, but... Uh, it's, 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 it's weird, though, because it's like they try and have the social commentary and things just don't make sense. They really don't make sense. Every... no... Almost no characters have redeem... none of the characters have redeeming qualities in that sense. They, they always trip over themselves to make themselves out to be dicks. Like, you, you have a... Uh, you got Laurie Strode, and she raised her kid to be a, you know, super hardcore survivalist. And, like, when she's talking about her bad childhood under that, it's so funny. She says, I learned to shoot a gun when I was eight. And I'm, th I'm sitting there in the audience listening, and I'm like, wow, Laurie waited a while to do that, didn't she? That was a long fucking time to go before you actually learned to shoot a gun. You could probably start at five if you're really good, and if you're, if your mother's a crazy survivalist that wants to ensure that you're going to have all the skills you need, why the hell would they wait until you're eight? But I was thinking of maybe getting my kid to like practice guns at six, but you know, either way. Uh, but then there's the whole thing towards the end is like they, they go over how horrible of the childhood she had learning to defend herself and survive because her mother was crazy uh kind of a, a kind of a uh uh sarah connor john connor kind of thing going there where she swears that there's going to be some horrible horrible reason that's going to be that i'm going to need to know these things but it turns out she's just crazy um and so they know how, but then when it comes time to the climax where she needs this knowledge and she uses this knowledge and it's very handy we happen to have this booby trap bunker at our disposal now that we're defending ourselves against Michael Myers who is here and has killed our friends and is trying to kill us now is the time I think to say I'm sorry, I really shouldn't have taught you to, de to defend yourself and survive that was wrong for me to do now, it clearly was the right thing at this point. If you didn't, you'd all be dead right now. It was clearly the better option. And you're going to apologize for it because doing that's bad. That's the bad thing to do. Yeah, it's like that hunting. Hunting is bad. Hunt, or, I, they didn't say hunting is bad, but it's like the way it's kind of implied. The way the, the movie is... The characters are pretty fucking woke. Let's say it that way. Uh, there's the, 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 uh, fucking, the hunter and his son going out in the middle of the night for some reason to go hunting, and the kid's not happy because he wanted to go to dance class. 
that's that's the uh, that's the uh, that is the actual desires and lines, and that's pretty much all the characterization we get there. His dad's a hunter, and he likes dance class. Oh well, they're both fucking dead now. So, in terms of like the the, the uh, there's there's a whole part like with the boyfriend of the granddaughter of Laurie where they're going over the history of the of Halloween 1978 and he straight up does it does what about is in the road as they're walking down the street like oh it's just a it's just a serial killer gone mad in this town who killed your fr grandmother's friends and tried to kill him there's worse things out there what about that and to which the two girls rightly tell him to shove it and it's like who what what the f that was a really awkwardly written and delivered scene <laughs> and then later it's like he's there's no that he he doesn't get all that much characterization anyway and he always it, it, you always see him like as like pretty good boyfriend to the granddaughter of Laurie Strode. I can't remember their fucking names. I just, it's Laurie Strode, Laurie Strode, Strode's daughter, and Laurie Strode's granddaughter. Boom, there we go. Those are the three ladies. And it mostly works out pretty well, but it's the, the guys they know. All the guys they know are all useless and pieces of shit and useless pieces of shit. Uh, there's... Laurie Strode's daughter's husband, the father of Laurie Strode's granddaughter, and he's just an absolute fucking useless, stupid, just... He is inept at everything. And he, uh, he's, like, he's setting up rat traps in the beginning with peanut butter, and he accidentally sets one off, of course, and hurts his hand, and like, oh, and his peanut butter goes everywhere, and he's there... Oh, I got peanut butter on my penis. And I'm thinking, like, what the fuck? No, unless your pants are down, you... No, you didn't. Why would... No. But, uh, yeah, so... Anyway, the, the boyfriend of the granddaughter, Laurie Strode, he's... After the, uh, whataboutism in the street, after that, he's pretty much... On the, okay, he's got his friend at school, he's also friends with the granddaughter, and they're going to a Halloween party, and it's going to be all happy, and everything's going well, and he's, I think he was there when the thing was going on where they met up with Laurie Strode at the place, and having a nice celebration to the graduation, eight, and I don't know what the hell's going on, anyway, the, uh, at the party, the granddaughter leaves for a little bit, comes back and he is talking to another lady and then they kiss and it's like well that came out of nowhere and then she's like really pissed off about this I'm thinking like well this is this is a really confusing situation and then he she pulls him away and then it's like flask drops out of his hip because evidently he's got a drinking problem and this is the first i've fucking heard of it and then he starts fucking yelling at her and i was like wait when the hell were you this asshole it's like oh he's always an asshole when he drinks well i didn't fucking know that and then he, she gets a fucking call and then he takes her phone and drops it in the goop and he's like are you gonna answer that like a big fucking giant dickhead that he is and she's like oh my god he's such a pain in the it's just so terrible to me it's like what the fuck this is just all now it just happened when the f holy shit and he doesn't die My michael never gets him he's he's fine he's in the clear the guy the nice guy though the friend from high school who's there for her and then he tr he moves in and then kisses her without her permission that motherfucker who thinks just because he was there for her, she deserves, uh, she, he, just because he was there for her, he deserves her affection, like he's, he's earned some affection for that being there for her. He's dead. He gets fucking impaled. <laughs> so, it was like, okay, so we got, we got the drunken abusive boyfriend now, evidently, and the nice guy, and the fucking inept father who can't do shit, and... Oh, Jesus Christ, it's like, all of these characters are just terrible. I'm like, fuck, for every character that's good, you have these really badly written, not too bad acted, 
but very badly written characters. Uh, the nice guy did have a pretty funny death, too, though. He, he had a little he, uh, mistaken identity with Michael, and he was having a little chat with him, and there was a little gag they were doing with the motion-sensing lights as they stand still, and they're looking at each other, and the lights go out, and then there's movement, and then Michael's closer, and Jin is, like, freaky and weird, and it was really well done. I liked that. But, yeah, there's... There, there's a little aspect of babysitting, but it was just kind of like, oh yeah, there's got to be a babysitter kill in here. And it's... It is what it is. It's... But the, the big thing towards the end was... Okay. Now... Michael's shown up and killed half the town. And uh, now the Strode family, ha or Laurie, uh, daughter, and granddaughter have to come together. And the granddaughter is all off on her own and such. And it's all, where's the granddaughter is the big concern for a while. And she's with the new doctor. I can't remember his name. The movie directly makes a joke where uh, Laurie looks at him and is like, oh, you're the new Loomis. And that, that's a pretty intentional kind of thing, because that's kind of how you're supposed to think about him. But then there's a twist involving him where, oh, he's actually the one who helped Michael escape from the bus in the beginning. Which does explain it a lot better than, oh, he just happened to escape again. Uh, and he has his reasoning and such, but he's, he kind of seems to be starting up to make himself off to be this malevolent force. Like, he even puts the mask on for a minute, and then he just, like, takes it off. Because why not? I guess. And then Michael kills him? And it, it's like, he, he's there, and he's he's big and bad for five minutes, and then he's his brains are splattered all over the place. His his head getting crushed and his brains going all over the place, though, was a very well done effect. I gotta say that. That was pretty nice. But then there was a weird fucking thing that didn't make any sense with how... Oh, Laurie's got that big isolated fortress of a house with all the secret compartments and all the traps and booby traps and shit and the big fucking fence around it with barbed wire that is a remote access that you gotta get with the voice over from the intercom, press the button, then it automatically opens. Or you can just run through the fucking woods and get there. There, There is absolutely no barricade at all in the woods. You just fucking walk through the woods and you're at the house. That's how the fucking granddaughter did it. <laughs> but, yeah, there's, uh, so they all get together in the house, and then mostly it's Laurie going around trying to get the guy, and then there's a little bit of Laurie's daughter, who really had the least amount of screen time, I think, even though they probably had some of the more interesting backstory to cover, but they, you know, covered it in a little bit like, oh, my mother raised me to survive, but she's crazy, and I'm upset about this, and now I have anxiety, but now there's the guy who's really here, and now is the time to apologize for teaching me to survive. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, she had, she had the least kind of time spent on her, but uh, at, at the end, they all just kind of all work together, and all three of them take out Michael. And it's like, he's he's locked in the basement, the place is set to burn the fuck down, and that's all well and good. But there's a couple of things right at the end that are kind of interesting. Number one, you don't see the body, so you know, always always the question there. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's, it's better than them definitively killing him and then just being like, whoopsie doopsie foxy wuxie, like from uh, H2O to Re Resurrection. That was just like, what the fuck? Uh... But, uh, then there's, uh, two things I noticed. One was, uh, right before the credits, so when the three ladies are getting out of there in someone else's truck, like, yay, this is, this is a, a happy, happy escape, they survived. Uh, Laurie and her daughter have a good amount of blood on their hands and on their waist. 
they don't necessarily look like they're absolutely dead, but they look pretty fucked up. And the granddaughter is there, and she's got a more, like, kind of this kind of look going on. And then it camera pans down, and she's got the knife in her hand, and it's covered in blood. Does that necessarily mean she stabbed her uh, mother and grandmother to death in the back seat there? Not necessarily, but the possibility is certainly there. It's like, hmm. Uh, and there's no after credit scene, but if you wait until after the credits, you do hear the sort of breathing sound uh, that has been going on throughout the movie with Michael Myers in the mask breathing. So that suggests that he did not die. It is, it is what it is. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's got definite good moments, but like, for every character that's really well written, there's one that's really badly written, and they're all acted pretty well though, and the angles can get janky sometimes in some scenes, but mostly they're really well done. Uh... This is a horror movie where they definitely say, like, anyone can die. Fuck it. That's why I'm thinking maybe Laurie and her daughter did get stabbed to death by their granddaughter, and it was just in that little tiny bit of... A little, a little couple of frames hint that that even happened, because they fucking killed the kid, they fucking killed several characters who were really important and well-acted and had all ac the unique accents and such earlier and all that. Uh... But they also killed some characters that really should have stayed a lot longer because they seemed very interesting and it would have made the movie a little more... It would have made the final events a little more interesting to me than just having the three... You know, Laurie, daughter, granddaughter, go up against Michael Myers mostly by hiding in the basement and one of them going out and doing stuff. But yeah, so it's... It was enjoyable, but it wasn't like earth-shattering, mind-blowing kind of wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck between a three and a four on that. Because, you know, good, but there are some parts that are not just, you know, not just could be better, but actually some some are downright really annoying. And it's like, hey, movies, just just stop. Just stop with your bullshit. Just, just, just be a movie, okay? Just be a movie. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Halloween 2018. Okay, that rhymes. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, don't build a closet in your house trying to escape from the terror of Michael Myers that just so happens to be the exact same dimensions and look as the closet he almost killed you in 40 years prior. Because, I don't know, in case he comes back, you might not be there, but you're going to spend way too fucking long fixating on it because you, 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 you don't, don't, don't.